Hi, and welcome to Life in the Word. We're in 1 John chapter 5, and this is the last week of November, kind of sliding into December here. Mm -hmm. So we hope you all had a great Thanksgiving week, and we're excited to be heading into the Christmas season. I can't believe it's here already. I know, I know, it came fast. So uh, in 1 John chapter 5 this week, it's talking about overcoming the world, and our question um, and reflection is kind of on this of where are our life, where are our love and our identity, they're hidden in Christ and we overcome through this thing of living our life through this place of knowing whose we are and who he is. Mm -hmm. um, and so the question is just reflecting on that. Who am I and why am I here? And I think those are questions that are those big questions everybody asks, but just to reflect on them first by thinking of who is Jesus? And what does he say the truth is? And then because of that, who am I? So sometimes I just think of like even who he says he is. So I think of him as the shepherd. And then I start thinking, so who am I? And then I reflect on, I'm his sheep and he loves me and he nurtures me and he carries me along and he takes me in directions. Um, so just reflecting on who we are and what we're called to based on who he is. I love, too, that what you have there um, on the devotional handout, what is love, but also what is it not? Yeah. I think depending on your life experiences, your set of circumstances, like if even just reading the Bible or Christianity is new to you, sometimes it's easier to identify the things that aren't love if we can't come up naturally with like, oh gosh, what is love? It seems like such a, you know, like God is love. Yes, we yeah. know that, but... I don't know, it can just seem a little lofty or like intangible. Yeah. So that's helpful to me. And I think even just kids too. My kids are, are young. And so you think about experiences with friends, those negative things seem to stand out more yeah. to them. And so identifying those things sometimes help us walk through and then come around to like, oh yeah, this would be love then. The yeah. absence of this thing that doesn't seem loving right here. Yeah, and First John has been all about love. It's in every single chapter that we love because he first loved us, and God is love, and our response to him. So I think just in wrapping up John to recognize this is the actuality of love. It's not what the world says love is, but this is the truth of love. This is the truth of who God says he is, and he is love. So just bringing that truth back around and circling around everything we've been talking about in First John. And it calls us to love all of God's children. And so just when you think about applying this, this time of year just lends naturally like to this anyway, just loving practically. Um, but, you know, our apply section says we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. How do we show love towards God? Well, we follow his commands, but we also love his children. And so something that I was thinking is just um, to have maybe in your car a bag of granola bars, maybe some hand warmers, some gloves. When you're driving around and you see somebody without, you know, somebody with a sign out by the stoplights, just to practically just hand them something to eat, something to keep them warm. Hey, God loves you. We love you. Yeah. You know, so that they know, yep, yeah, we're... We're here and we're going to take care of you. Yeah. It's just a really practical application. And there are a million different ways that you can love on people um, and therefore love God too. Yeah, I love that. And I think <clears throat> I was just thinking about how we were driving the other day and we try to do little things. But it helps open your kids' eyes to see beyond themselves because it's, it's easy to see yourself and to kind of keep your eyes on what your needs and your wants are. Um, but like we were driving and my kids like noticed somebody like mom there's somebody who needs something let's stop and so i just think like to teach your kids to love by like making it easy and practical mm -hmm. like we love we and it just gets their eyes sometimes off themselves and our eyes off ourselves to just be looking for how do i love and to keep it as a focus yeah i mean it's it's easy to go okay well i'm gonna work on loving my family but to just to broaden that scope and be looking because there's opportunities everywhere. Yeah. Um, today we're doing, or for this week we're praying, and what I have is doing is something a little bit different. It's actually going to the Lord's Prayer, which is in Matthew. 
But just in reading through this and talking about what is his will and his will to love, um, it just reminded me of that. So we're just going to take time. It's this prayer that we've heard so many times in mm -hmm. church or growing up. And I think even a lot of people who haven't grown up in church, you've probably heard this. But to just, even if you just take one phrase of it and you just say, our father. And I think about, and I stop and I think, what does that mean? I'm talking to a father. Um, and no matter what your experience is with fathers, I know people have different experiences to know like he's a good father who's listening. And I think of like what I talk to my dad about. It's like, <clears throat> dad, my car has this going on. Who do I call? And just thinking of like, I'm coming to you, to him as the one who has the answers, who has more wisdom, who wants to take care of me. So just taking the Lord's Prayer and praying it, but just taking time to just really think on even just one sentence at a time, and what does this mean, and aligning our hearts with how Jesus prayed. Yeah. Um, and then our, our meditation verse, the memorization verse for this week, is uh, verse 12 out of chapter 5. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. And I think at face value, when I read that, it sounds more of something that, I don't know if happens to us is the right word. It just doesn't necessarily seem very actionable. And so when I was reading it, this verse in the message version, um, where is it here? It says, uh, whoever has the son has life. Whoever rejects the son rejects life. And that just had a little bit of a bite to it when I read it. And it just reminded me like, this is a choice. This isn't just something that we are complacent in and we actually if we're not choosing to believe God's testimony about his son if we're not choosing to believe the gospel and the good news we're actually actively rejecting it um, and so that just has kind of been in the, the back of my mind and the front of my mind to just be actively choosing that um, in the day to day and just remembering that like everything is a choice. It's not just kind of this like flat line, things are just happening around me all day. Like that's actually on me to choose or if I'm not choosing it to reject it. Yeah. So. And wrapping up, it just reminds me like just back to the to what we're talking about. Like we love God by obeying his commands. We love him by choosing him and choosing to say yes to what he says yes to. Uh, and that it's a good thing. He wants us to be filled with his love and his life. So, uh, so we hope that you've enjoyed First mm -hmm. John with us. We're going to jump next week into Philippians, and we can't wait to see you then. Yeah, we'll see you in December.